Hi. So in this lesson, I want to review lesson 2.1, Activities and Intents. To get started, we're going to create a new app. Let's go to Android Studio, choose Start a New Android Studio Project. We're going to call this Two Activities. And we'll go with the defaults and choose Next. Uh, we want this default here for API 15, choose Next. And here we're going to choose an empty activity for our template. Choose Next. And we'll go through, make sure you have layout file and backwards compatibility checked, and choose Finish. For this project, we're going to create two activities and navigate between one screen to the next and transfer data between the two. Once that finishes loading, let's go to the activity underscore main.xml file. And here we're looking at the design view. If you don't see that, go ahead and select design here at the bottom. Notice we have a text view. Select that and let's delete the text view. Right now, uh, notice here it's showing, and if I highlight it long enough, it says turn on auto connect. Let's go ahead and do that. We want to turn on auto connect so that when we add a component to the layout, it's going to add constraints for us. And that'll help in this case. We want to add a button, and if you don't see it, it's under here under the palette under common. And if I click and drag, then notice how when I get closer, I'm still holding on to it. I, I it snaps to the left and the bottom. Go ahead and let go. And notice how it's added those constraints for us. Okay, let's go to the attributes window and let's switch to view all attributes. And from here, we want to change a couple of things. First, let's change the ID to button underscore main. Make sure that the layout width and the layout height are set to wrap content, which they are. And then let's check, uh, change the title of this button and change it to send. And it will, should look like this. Now let's go to the text view of this. Uh, so we can see the activity underscore main dot XML uh, file. Notice in the button we want to add uh, what is called an on click handler. And if I uh, press return here within this button, I'm going to say on click. And notice it uh, suggests that I press tab. And here we're going to say launch second activity. And then we'll click away. Now, Notice we have two warnings. Uh, one is saying because this is a hard-coded string, and so to fix that, if I uh, click within it, then I can just select here and press Extract String Resource, and I'm just going to say underscore button at the end of this, and then choose OK. So that solves that one. Now down here it's saying, hey, this doesn't exist. Well, let's see if we can get that to work. Now when you've selected inside the text, you can either click here and say, um, create launch from here, or you know you can also press Option, Enter, or Command Enter, depending on if you're on a Mac or Windows, and it brings up that alternate menu, and it's the same menu that we had from the side, and we just choose Launch Second Activity View in Main Activity, and notice it automatically creates the method and takes us right to it. So if you go back to the activity main, notice now the error is gone. Very good. All right. Let's give ourselves a little more space. And we're going to type the following. Log dot D. And notice the options. We have a string and for a tag and a string for a message. Go ahead and select that. And for the, the tag, I'm going to create a tag and we're going to use a constant. And so I'm going to say log underscore tag. And notice it's red because it doesn't exist yet, but we're going to use the uh, code support that uh, uh, Android Studio gives us to make that work. Next, we're going to give um, some text and we're going to say button clicked. And then we're going to close that and with a semicolon. So to fix this where it's red because it doesn't exist, we can do a couple things. We Either we can start typing up here within the class definition and define this as a constant, or we can use Android Studio to do it for us. 
So if I select here and I say create constant field, and from here uh, we want to select that, we, we keep it as a string. And for here we're going to use a string that is reference of the actual main activity name. So we say main activity dot class dot get simple name. What this does, if I press return, it clears that little square. What this does is it gets the name of this activity and the simple name is just the name which is main activity. So when we click the button, it's going to log a message in the console and it, the log tag will be the name of the main activity. If you have multiple logs, which you will tend to do, and you have different um, activities, you want to know which one you're referencing. So that's how we do that here. Let's go ahead and run the app and see how this works. I'm going to use an emulator. You can certainly use a device if you've got it connected. So from here, we go ahead and press send. Now, we don't see anything because we don't have the log open. If I go back to keep the app running, and I go back here and notice I kind of move things around to give us some space. If I come back here, we want to go to Logcat, if you don't have it already, and notice it's it knows the uh, emulator and the app is running, but it's uh, it's showing quite a bit of information. You can filter that by either switching to debug, and then uh, that'll help it as you go. But again, notice it's kind of spitting out a lot of information. We can also filter by saying main activity, and now it's only going to show the things that are related to the main activity uh, act actions, things that are going on with that code. So if I show here, uh, we want to keep going. So if I click send, notice how it shows up. Main activity button clicked. Perfect. So we know that's working. Let's go back to Android Studio and stop that process. Now we want to create a second activity in order to navigate to. We're going to right click on the app menu and choose new and under activity we're going to choose empty activity. From here we want to give this a name. So this is again we've talked about we want to give it a more descriptive name and in this case we're just going to call this second activity. Obviously it's not very descriptive <laughs> but that's what the uh, course shows. So we're going to follow their directions. All right, so notice it's a generated layout file, backwards compatible, and all the same. Go ahead and choose finish. So once that's created, it will open up and it'll have the second activity Java class, the activity underscore second dot XML. And also notice if we uh, go under our manifest, notice in the Android manifest dot XML, it adds the activity to the manifest for us. And that's important, otherwise the app won't compile the code if it's not referenced in the Android manifest.xml file. We need to update this so that it uh, handles and shows the relationship between the second activity and the main activity. It's just this one line. Let's delete this. And I'm going to copy and paste from the course so that we have this information properly. We're going to have to fix this because obviously we want it to match our package. So notice uh, that it's wrong right here where it says com.example. So I'm going to set this here and now that resolves properly. Now this shows a big fat warning. App is not indexable by Google search. Consider adding at least one activity in an action view intent. Uh, we won't worry about that. We can talk about that another time. What this does is it sets up the title, which is the label. So it's a little cl uh, cleaner. It's not just second activity with all one word. It's two words. It also sets the parent activity name. And it's important to do that. When you have, when you go from one activity to the next, in order to take advantage of the back button and the back feature of uh, the device, you set a relationship. And we're saying this um, activity is a child of the main activity. So it's saying my parent is main activity. So we set that up and then it supports parent activity. And so it inherits all of the navigation behaviors that we expect. While we're here, um, Let's extract this label. Notice that it's hard-coded. 
And so let's extract the string resource for this. And we're just going to call this activity two underscore name. Click OK. Let's modify the layout for this activity. So click on activity underscore second dot XML. And from here, we have our view, design view. And we want to add a text view to this. So go ahead and select a text view and click and drag. And let's put it in the top left corner. And then from here, we want to um, change some attributes. You may see the full attributes, which is everything here. Um, we can go back to fewer, view fewer attributes. From here, let's go ahead and change some of these. We want to change this to text underscore header. And uh, from the top margin, we want to set that to 16, which is good. And from the left, we want to set that to 8. We want to make sure wrap width, the layout, sorry, layout width and layout height are wrap content. Uh, for the text, we're going to say message received. For the text appearance, we want to set this and we're going to change this to appcompat.medium. And so I'm just going to scroll through and set that there. And then for the text style, we want to set that to bold. To get to the text style, we want to twirl this open text appearance and then set the style to bold. Let's go to the text view for this and uh, take a look at here. We're going to fix this error. So uh, again, we can command return, option, return, extract string resource, and we're going to call this text underscore header. Very good. Now let's go to the main activity.java class and we're going to create what is called an explicit intent. What this does is it allows you to launch into another activity or even another application. In our case, we want to launch into the second activity. And from here, we want to do this from within the launch second activity method. So we'll keep our log statement. And from here, we want to um, create the following. And it's an intent. And you press tab to uh, autocomplete. Notice under imports, and this happens kind of quickly, but notice now it adds the uh, import statement for intent. So we have object of type intent space, and then we're going to call this intent. And this is going to equal new intent. And from here, we need to pass in this, which is a reference to the current class, and then the class that we're going to. In this case, it's called second activity dot class. Go ahead and close that. And then from here, we, we've created the intent. Now we need to um, call it in order for it to do something. So we say start activity and we pass in the intent, which is intent. There we go. Let's go ahead and run the app and see how it goes. So here we have the app, and I'm going to go ahead and press the send button, and notice what happens. Hey, check it out. Second activity, message received. So that's our activity that we created. And notice that we have the back button. And if I press back, hey, guess what? We're back in the main activity. I can go back again, and I can even use the back button on the hardware and check it out. Okay, at this point, let's stop this video. We're going to go on to a second video. Is this getting a little long? So we're going to finish up in the next video how to uh, pass data between each intent. So it's nice and well that we're going between activities, but in order to make it more valuable, we want to pass data between the two. So be sure to subscribe and look for the next video. Thank you.